gonna be a really quick video, hopefully, um, on how I made my... Hey there! Hello! So, it's quite a while later, um, if you couldn't tell by the fact that my hair is long and partially blue. Um, I'm redoing this intro because the intro that I did was very stuttery and not coherent, so I'm going to do a new one. <laughs> So today I'm doing a bum roll. Hopefully today will be a quick video because it's not too difficult. So it's important that I make the bum roll now because after this I'm going to be making petticoats and all sorts of things that go on top of this. And it's fundamental to the shape of the garments. Um, the thing that draws me to the 18th century is its silhouettes, especially the massively wide hips of the 18th century upper class. Um, but of course I'm doing a working class woman, so I'm just doing a simple bum roll, bum pad. It's got lots of different names, sometimes they're rumps. Uh, so, as little as it is, it's a really crucial part of the outfit and it's a really crucial element in the silhouette. I also apologise in advance for the quality of the video and the audio. I was using a different camera, thinking that it was better quality than my phone, but clearly it wasn't. Uh, so. From this point on, I'm pretty sure I just use my phone. I also make a lot of mistakes like I do in every video I've filmed so far. Uh, and this is not entirely historically accurate. Uh, again, like a lot of the videos that you've seen so far. Um, but it's the best that I can do with the things that I had. And because I made this relatively early in my sewing journey, uh, it's not the best quality, and I ended up remaking it later on into a different size and colour and the times are different, but this is my original learning process. Uh, so don't use this as a tutorial or a guide, this is just my initial learning experience um, looking at bum rolls. Uh, so if you want to watch that, then keep watching. So I'm just making the bum roll out of cotton, and I'm using beeswax to help strengthen my thread. Cool, so I was looking at this website which I'm using for the pattern, I'll put a link down below, and this shape here is what the bum roll is going to look like, and I thought it was just going to say draw this pattern on a piece of paper and then you know adjust it to your size and whatever, but it actually says here to take some aluminium foil um, and squish it around your waist until it gets to the right shape and then that's how you can uh, sketch up your waist curve correctly. I'm going to start from the front. I'm going to mark two inches out to the side and then the back I'm going to mark out I think probably four inches or maybe a bit more. Um, and I'm going to sort of mark halfway here the, like the number of inches between the two and the four or the five or whatever um, and then slowly make a curve that'll go all the way around. Hi it's Editing Marie here. Uh, I just wanted to explain what I just said because it did not make sense um, when I tried to edit it. <laughs> uh, so this is the bun roll. What I was saying is that this length here or this width here would be about two inches this width here would be about four or five inches, and then I'd curve it around um, to make a nice lovely shape. It's the next day and I've finished all the sewing for the outside. What I'm going to do is first turn this inside out so that the right sides are outwards and turning it inside out means that I don't have to do any finishing on the outer edge. I've got that sort of shape 
in my cute little drawer. I've got a whole book bag full of, well it's not a book bag anymore really, it's main purpose at the moment is to hold all my scraps. But all the little pieces I'm going to pop into there and that's how I'm going to stuff it. Now this is also quilted. So I'm trying to decide whether I will uh, draw in the lines and sew in the lines before or after. But if I quilt it beforehand then it means that I can keep an eye on how big each section is. Scrap fabrics are very historically accurate because um, people never wanted to waste fabric so if you could save up all your scrap fabrics and use it in something else then that would save you money because you wouldn't have to go out and buy you know a stuffing or whatever um, and it just means that you know it's a bit more sustainable and finding a use for this without you know chucking it out because um, fabric can get really expensive <laughs> So I've done that, it's still the same day so hopefully I will get this done tonight. All I have to do is put a ribbon around here and then make it so that it's long enough to tie a little bow at the front and then I'm done. So yes, I'm also refilming the outro because apparently I didn't do the proper one. Uh, so this was really fun, it was really interesting. I sewed this a few months back because I'm lazy at editing <laughs> but I sewed this a few months back when I was still very relatively new to sewing and I'm pretty proud of what I did uh, for having done like two things before that. I didn't do it all hand sewn, although I was planning to, but after I did the outside I got lazy and quilted it by using the sewing machine, but then I did hand sew the inside and sewed the ribbon on like that. There are a few flaws with it, like everything, um, which I'm going to go over quickly. I did end up making a second one, which looks a lot better, and so I've been using that one instead of this one. But this was just my initial learning experience, so it's okay if I messed up or made a mistake. One thing that I really like about this, and that I would probably do again, is I stuffed it with my scrap fabrics, which was good because I can recycle, which I enjoy doing. But it also had a downside because I put a little bit of wool in it which made it a lot heavier than I intended it to be which isn't necessarily a bad thing but because it was so small and so thin it sort of just flopped onto my body shape which sometimes that's what you want but it was too small to be really making a difference so when I remade it I stuffed it with polyester which I know it's not historically accurate but uh, it does the job if I was to stuff it with fabric again, I would use like threads, our cutoffs and like little bits of cotton and stuff rather than, I put in quite a bit of wool. It wasn't like, you know, the majority of it wasn't stuffed with wool, but there was quite a bit of wool which really made an impact. Another thing that I enjoyed was the quilting, which I don't think was historically accurate. Um, I sort of took a little bit of inspiration from Bernadette Banner's video with like a late 19th century bum roll but um, I did a little bit of research not heaps um, because at that point in time my main goal was to get everything done quickly so I could wear it rather than taking the time to make sure it was correct 
which means some of my swimming was sloppy, but I've improved upon that through this journey, which you'll see later on. In Outlander, I use that as a reference. Uh, in the scene where Claire's getting dressed in 18th century garb for the first time, she has a very round uh, bum roll, which that is how the second one ended up um, looking. But it, the second one, when I stuffed it, became very, very round. And that was fine until I put on my petticoats over the top and it altered the shape of the skirts in a way that I didn't like. So I ended up quilting it, and by quilting it I mean I sewed a few sort of, not channels, I just sewed a few lines, um, I think three or four, in the bum roll, which meant that it was a bit flatter, that it had sections, and it made it a bit easier, they sort of acted like joints, so it made it a bit easier to mould it to my shape. But the second one was stuffed bigger, which meant that it uh, it made the right shape. I recommend if you're going to make a bum roll or something like this, do not use ribbon as your ties. Because I used what it said was silk, but it was very, very cheap. It was from like a, a $2 shop or something. The ribbon was really slippery, which meant that there wasn't enough friction to keep the bum roll where I needed it to be. It didn't sit on my body in the right way and it just wasn't easy to use. So when I remade it, I just cut off a bit of cotton or something, cotton polyester. So I used it a bit like bias binding, although it didn't have a stretch, which you don't want to stretch because I used this uh, bias binding for my pockets and it's okay, but you don't really want to stretch when you're trying to tie something that can hold heavy things in it to your body. I used the cotton, like a bias binding, and then whipped the edges that uh, weren't attached to the bum roll, which added an extra layer of fr friction. So not only was it not only was it cotton, but it also had whip stitches, which helped grab onto the other whip stitches when I tied a bow. <laughs> I can't speak. Anyway. <laughs> So that's all I have for you today. Uh, if you want to see more of my content, then please subscribe and I'll leave my Outlander project playlist in the end screen. <laughs> I can't speak at the moment. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you want to see the last video in my Outlander series where I made the pockets, then the link will also be in the end screen. And I'll also leave a link to the resources that I used when making the video. Yeah, but that's it. So I'll see you later. Bye. Um, I highly recommend if you want to do a bit of hand sewing and this is convenient for you. Like, obviously don't make it if you're not going to wear it. <laughs> and so, uh, I, I, <laughs> I use it like you would bias binding, so I fold it in the outside. <laughs> and I saw that it sort of made like a, like a big shape. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. it, it get it up. So that I can hear it. Angelica. Okay. So hopefully this will be a really quick video. Uh, today I'm doing. No, no, no. But yeah. <laughs> Wait. Uh, I also apologize. I also apologise for the audio and video quality, um, yeah. I also apologise for the visual and the audio quality. Uh, at the time I was using a different camera that I thought had better quality video, yeah. Um, at the time I was using a low quality camera that I thought, yeah. I also apologise in advance for the video, um, yeah, but that's it, so I'll see you later. Bye. I look really weird. <coughs> My hair looks nice though.